Hi, my name is Erin and I'm a Howard County Park Ranger. I'm here today to tell you about one of my favorite activities, which is birding. Birding is a great social distancing activity that you can do outside with your family or from the comforts of your home. It helps if you have a pair of binoculars, but if you don't, there's still lots of clues that will help you identify birds. These include size, shape, color, song or call, behavior, habitat, and range. Size and shape are often the first things you pick up on when you are out birding. Is the bird you're looking at large or small? Does it have a long beak or short? A long tail? Does it have a crest or other noticeable plumage? The bird on the left is an eastern bluebird, and the bird on the right is a great blue heron. Sometimes, if the light is favorable, color is the first thing you notice about a bird. This bright red bird is a common visitor to many yards. Notice also the black mask and crest on its head. Keep in mind, many male and female birds are different colors. Most often, the males are more brightly colored to attract mates. This is a male northern cardinal. The females also have a crest, but are more brown. Vocalizations are another great way to help you identify birds, and if you practice enough, you will be able to identify most birds by your ears alone. Bird vocalizations are broken down into two categories, songs and calls. Bird songs are generally longer and melodic, used for courtship or territory displays. Bird calls are shorter and less complex, used for alarms or to communicate with other flock members. It is possible to identify a bird by its calls, but it is much easier to identify them by their distinctive songs. There are several ways to help you remember what each bird sounds like. To start with, you can use metaphors. For example, the cardinal song I just played sounds like a laser gun. Now, when you are outside and hear a sound like a laser gun, you know it is a northern cardinal singing without even seeing the bird. This field sparrow pictured on the screen sounds like a ping pong ball dropping. Another way to remember some bird songs is to put words to them. Sometimes it almost sounds like the birds are using human words. For example, it almost sounds like this Carolina wren is singing, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle. These memory devices are called mnemonics. You can look up suggested mnemonics for bird songs and field guides, or make up your own. The best mnemonic is going to be the one that sticks in your head to help you remember what the bird sounds like. Keep in mind, birds are just like people. While each species' song is similar, birds have regional accents and individual quirks, so no two songs will sound exactly the same. There are also birds such as this northern mockingbird, who have no song of their own but mimic other birds. They can sing as many as 200 other songs, and even imitate car alarms and other human sounds. What makes the mockingbird song characteristic is that they always repeat it three or more times. Behavior is another good way to identify birds from far away. This eastern kingbird is a type of flycatcher. Most flycatchers will sit on a perch, fly out quickly to catch a bug, then fly back into the same perch. Some flycatchers also frequently flick or dip their tails while they are sitting. The last two clues we can use are habitat and range. These are sometimes mistaken to be the same thing, but they are different. A bird's habitat is its natural home or environment. For example, this wood thrush prefers to live in deciduous and mixed forests and feed on the invertebrates and berries it finds in the leaf litter. You will usually not find them in the middle of a field or on a beach. Range is where the species can be found geographically. This can be critical in determining the identification of a bird. This chickadee is a Carolina chickadee, but there is another species that looks exactly the same called the black cap chickadee. The birds do have a slightly different song, but if they are not singing, the only way to tell them apart might be to look at their range. The Carolina chickadee is found primarily in the southeastern U.S., and the black-capped is only found in the northern U.S. and Canada. Here in Howard County, most of the chickadees are Carolina chickadees. Thank you for joining me for the basics of bird identification. If you enjoyed this video, stay tuned for more upcoming videos that will cover other bird-related topics. 
Remember, if you go outside, practice good social distancing skills. Stay safe and have fun.